Oh, hello, everybody. Uh, I think we actually did it. I think we are actually <laughs> live on Zoom doing a thing. Uh, it says we're live. I think we're live. Uh, hello to Scott. Hello to Shannon. Hello to Jesse. Hello to Megan. Hello to you. Uh, this is our live panel. This is our fancy backdrop that 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 we found in the Zoom settings. It's great. And <laughs> and I'm really glad to see you and hope you're doing well. Uh, hello, everybody. Wheeler, how are you? Yeah, doing well. Um, you know, as as well as could be expected. We're just uh, we're in Olds, Alberta. Well, just outside Olds, Alberta, at Phoenix's uh, parents' house. We were here for a couple weeks before uh, the evac, and then we put our return off for a couple of days. And of course, we've just decided to stay. So doing all right. Excellent. So you are in Olds, Alberta. Megan Miskaman, where are you? I'm in Calgary, Alberta. And how's Calgary this fine Monday morning? Well. It's kind of sunny out there, so that's nice. Still there, is it? Great, yeah, great. Still Thanks. there. Good, good. Um, Shannon, where are you? I have finally landed in downtown Edmonton after a couple shuffles. <laughs> okay, where did? What were the shuffle destinations? Um, truck. <laughs> a truck. Okay. Yeah, I was sleeping I'm... in a truck. Yeah. Um. Then, uh, Saint Albert um and now i'm in alberta i mean edmonton <laughs> <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a long week so much that it's yeah. now a new week but it feels like the old week um and and lecter where are you i too am in alberta uh red deer alberta to be exact uh yeah we got here i guess uh saturday night uh, checked into the evac center, were warmly received by uh, by the wonderful folks there, and uh, got set up with a couple hotel rooms. And so now we are we are sitting uh, relatively comfortable in Red Deer, Alberta. Excellent. Um, it's it's nice to know that we have like a, a spinal column of Alberta there. We're just right down because pretty much it's just like you're all just in a line down a highway, aren't you? Or am I just pretty much? Yeah. Pretty much. And I'm in Fort Simpson, so, you know, <laughs> welcome to Lady Slipper Lodge. Uh, I've got the Mackenzie River just just drifting past uh, above the camera in the background here. It's a beautiful morning here. It's a little bit nippy. It's about, I don't know, 11, 12 degrees. I am being looked after phenomenally well by Lynn and Mike at Lady Slipper Lodge. They they are just, I was just about to come on air and Mike's like, what, uh, when are you, uh, I think it's a, a, some breakfast here. I'm like, well, I've got to go and do this thing eight till nine. Then we've got to have a little meeting. I'll probably won't be done till nine thirty. And you can see him saying, "Oh, nine thirty. Okay, nine thirty. And like, that's that's awesome. Oh, uh, really nice. Uh, Ollie, before we go any further, can you uh, just give an official? This is the official return of mornings at the Wabin for us. Mornings at the Wabin. This is the official return of mornings at the Wabin. You asked for it, NWT. <laughs> mornings at the Wabin, so called because this would normally be Mornings at the Webcam, uh, which is the video version of our Mornings at the Cabin show. So it became Mornings at the Wabin. We did toss around some other suggestions. There was discussion of Mornings at the Wildfire, and we decided, mm, no. Uh, I personally like Mornings at someone else's cabin. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this this, this is going to be a long, a long, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> If you were sound, I'm so happy that works. <laughs> um, I'm just going to quickly before we get into relaxing things, which would be nice, wouldn't it? I I just want to do a quick sort of summary of what's going on wildfire wise today. Uh, I'll keep this as non offensive and stressful as possible. So the briefing last night, we know that we think we're going to be in for a tough few days for each of the, the main fires, the ones outside Yellowknife, Hay River and Fort Smith. We'll keep you guys updated on that. On our website, there's there's a live page. I know I said I wasn't going to do a live page, but then I missed it all weekends and it's back. I think it'll be useful. And there's a wildfire summary page where you can just get in less than a minute. Here's the latest that we know about each of the fires. Uh evacuee supports wise i know there's a whole bunch of questions around school this morning the premier mentioned e-learning last night and i think that went down less than well 
in in some slash most slash all areas. So we're going to do a little bit of investigating into that. I know there's lots of questions around financial supports as well. And we are going to, I think our whole team are going to spend most of our day just going and trying to get answers for you guys. And we will report those when we get them. And I do want to point out, we have a lovely article on our website of all the photos of rainbows last night in Yellowknife. There was a really nice looking rainbow and it's quite touching that everyone's first reaction who's still left in Yellowknife was to take a photo of it and then send it to us. So all the photos of rainbows are on one page on our website. Yeah, the that's end. great. The end. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That is great. Yeah, a lot of rainbows in the feed this morning, so that's uh, that's a beautiful thing. And uh, there's a bunch of rain last night as well, which is which is very nice. So I mean, it's been uh, yeah, and into a tough couple of days. It's nice to see some really nice, uh, uh, some hopeful posts. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, I might as well just jump in here and say that uh, I know that there are a few city councillors, Yellowknife city councillors in Edmonton right now, and they've been doing a lot of work um, to get information for people, um, and that I really appreciate them doing that, uh, including, if anyone's listening and you are in uh, any of these, you know, places in Alberta right now, and you are missing some sort of uh, medication or medical service, they've worked it out. They've shared that you can dial 811, the uh, Alberta Health Line, and they know what's going on and they will get you help. So it's my first PSA. <laughs> PSA is very welcome. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot of that over the next few days. The thing, the thing that's obviously the most challenging, I think, for anybody, and we're trying to help with as much as possible is that information just turns up everywhere mm -hmm. uh, at, from so many different sources but then you also have that extra layer of those nine pieces of information might be accurate but the tenth might not be and so we're trying to if you look at our website you've got the guides please go and use the guides if you haven't seen them already there's a guide to getting out which i think most people have accomplished but there's still some people essential workers etc who may be leaving uh, I got a couple of photos yesterday from people who drove past that little flare up for the wildfire that closed the highway between Enterprise and Kukiza. So still very much a thing that people are trying to get out. Uh, there's a guide to where to stay that you might still need, particularly if you're you know, pulling a Shannon and going from truck to evac center to wherever you need to be. And there's also a guide to everything else, which is going to become the most important one, because that is the financial supports and things like that as we as we hear more about them. I, I realize there's not a massive amount of information out there right now. And there are many financial supports around for many different categories, if you like, of person, depending on what your circumstances are. But but there's not really one broad catch-all piece of advice we can give anybody to say this applies to everyone. So we're we're going to do some work on that and, and try and get answers on that as well. Because the the hard thing I have found is that information all last week was in about 50 different and if you didn't have Facebook, I don't know how you, I mean, hopefully we were some help, but otherwise I don't know how you would have known what on earth was happening because all the information was being put on Facebook first. And I realize there are not that many people who don't have Facebook, but I'm not in the current climate of news, not massively sure that a hundred percent reliance on Facebook is, is advisable. So I hope everybody was able to find the information they needed at the time. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, go ahead, Jesse. No, 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 you, no, please, uh, please. Oh, God, well, I just, I just wanted to say, no, I thought this, uh, <laughs> and then we both start going. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to say that uh, I feel like this, uh, this might kill you a little bit, Ollie, and I know that, you know, we've received floods of emails from people thanking us for, uh, for the coverage that, that our news team has done, and Frankly, I've never been prouder to be a part of this cabin radio team, this plucky little team that uh, has made it all this way. But I think the Yellowknife NWT rant and rave page on Facebook has become a little bit of a lifeline for Northerners. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The thing I've avoided for years. There has been a lot of 
really good discussion and some not so constructive conversation, but a lot of also really helpful conversation for people happening at the Yellowknife and NWT Rant and Raves page. And I couldn't help but see that and think, oh my God, if they're not coming to us, this is where they're coming. So if you're watching this right now and you've, you know, you've become aware of any help that may not be uh, maybe getting lost in translation for some people and you see people posting on NWT rant and raves and saying, hey, you know, we're having trouble finding financial assistance. We're not quite sure what to do. Try to direct them to cabinradio.ca. If they refuse to do that, then please, maybe if you can direct them to the resources that we at least do have available, because, yeah, there have been a lot of people who have been reaching out on that page and I know Ollie is a little bit dead inside now. No, no. no. <laughs> but no. I was just reading some of the comments coming through in an effort not to have to listen to that. So <laughs> hello to Chris Greencorn, who I think, can I, like, Chris Greencorn, yeah. he just, where's the, can we have a, some sort of, Scott, you've literally. <laughs> yeah, it is very sweet. Yes. Chris Greencorn says, hey, Ollie, could you do the show at 5 a.m. so I can watch? Uh, <laughs> oh. You can. <laughs> you get a laugh, Chris. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, there's a couple of other questions, like info about disaster relief for small businesses. Uh, small businesses and self-employed people, we have had a lot of questions about that. That is going to be a today thing for our team to try and figure that out. Um, someone asked, I missed the update last night and I'd like to watch it. Am I still able to do that? That's the press conference that the GNWT holds. Uh, Lindsay, I would check the City of Yellowknife's live webcasts page because they have been webcasting them. I don't know if they're archiving them. And I would check the CBC's website because the CBC has been live streaming them as well. And the stream might be in their coverage from yesterday evening. So you might be able to go back and and watch that as well. Uh, thank you for the questions, you guys. Please keep the comments coming in. And this is also a good place to share information. Um, I'm just going to say it might even be as good as Yellowknife Random Raves. Uh, you can <laughs> you can put a little note in the comments here, and if you've got something really important, we can we can get it out. Uh, goodbye, Chris Greencourt, who's running into an operations meeting. Please stop all our houses from burning down. That would be great. And uh, thank you to Jess Tweed as well, who's put a, a link to some more financial supports in our comments, and we will go check a look through those uh, in the future as well. Sorry, I feel like I'm already monopolizing this with boring wildfire chat. I apologize. That's all good. No, I, mean, hey, look, I think I figured the, this is how it was. And then uh -oh. just stop. Um... <laughs> <laughs> That's a really dramatic pause. <laughs> My internet connection is unstable. Um, like me, Not the only um, one. <laughs> I, I figured that's kind of how the first one would go. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta let everybody know. And I mean, just like the, the press conferences we've been seeing, the first, you know, the first half of them should just be thanking everybody and making sure everybody knows that we've written everything down and writing from a script. Um, uh, uh, finally, our goal of uh, making Yellowknife rants and raves the repository for every bit of information that we need about Yellowknife is complete. This is good. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> This is what I've wanted for so long. I want everybody to be a part of the All Night Rants and Rips. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, just to uh, uh, jump on what uh, what Scott was saying, obviously uh, that's kind of what I wanted to say as well. The, the news team is just, I uh, haven't had a chance to talk to all you guys, and um, it's just been incredible to watch uh, and uh, listen and uh, read all the incredible work you're doing, blah, 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 blah. You all know you're awesome. So um, it's been uh, it's been really great. And uh, but you, you you hit on something really important about the Facebook thing. Obviously, this uh, this ban has been uh, really uh, made it really challenging for everybody, for, for people who have Facebook and people who depend on Facebook, because if, obviously it's become just like it's become like the Internet for a lot of people. Like that's what they go on. They go on Facebook. They don't maybe they don't do much else. Um, but it's it's interesting to see that everybody everybody's trying to help which is great but there's there's a, a lot of different facebook groups that are sharing all the information so it's kind of hard to know where to go so i mean it's been nice that we've been able to at least try to do some of that and have a have a, a place for people to go and all the links so that's been very good work so thank you for that uh cabin radio team um uh, lighter stuff 
I don't know. What? what? My mom's here. She made it. That was great. She's uh... <laughs> she drove. I think, I think she drove twelve hours the first day, and then another six hours the, the second day, and then she's like here for a couple of days, and now she's like, I'm just gonna go out to Saskatchewan and visit family. It's like, okay, sure, all right. She is, uh, she, yeah, exactly. She is. Uh, she can't be stopped, and nope. um, and uh, so it's been it's been really nice having her here, and uh, so that's been a really nice bit of reprieve. Um, and now that we're kind of settled uh, a little bit and we're kind of waiting for obviously word as to what happens next, uh, now we can kind of uh, do a little visiting. Uh, hopefully for some people they can like settle down and uh, see some people at Edmonton or Red Deer or wherever they happen to might uh, happen to be. Um, yeah, that's that's been really nice too. So uh, I mentioned before that we went on that uh, Lecter and I have a movie date tonight. So we're going to yeah. go see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Um, so that'll be a lot. Now why I see now That's why people nice. are slightly confused because I when you were telling me that just before we came on the air, I thought you said you had a Wii date, as in like yeah. the Nintendo Wii, which is why I made a washroom. Ah. Yeah. And I now understand I why quite blank when I made that washroom joke after you said you're going for a movie date. So I retract that joke as I now understand why it made zero sense to anybody. Um, I was very confused. <laughs> very sounds. I get that. Um, lots of lots of messages coming in in the comments from people, which is really useful. Scott, Scott and Hay River. Well, I say Scott in Hay River. Scott occasionally of Hay River. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All of your support and everything, Scott, for months and months and months now. Um, Scott's just mentioning that, yeah, same during the Hay River evac, we we're expecting here that you can get $750, but only in cer certain circumstances. Like if you're not getting paid for your employer, you don't have retirement income, blah, blah, blah. So there are some government financial supports out there, but you kind of have to be in a specific situation to get them. And I think most people's question is, I'm not really in one of those specific situations, but I am currently a little bit worried financially. So what's there for me? And the answer so far that I can see is not a whole lot, but we'll keep having a little look through through all of that, as Scott says, Scott rarely in Hay River. Yes, yeah, sorry about that, Scott. Uh, I should also add, yesterday, a, a TV crew from Global News came here to Fort... Um, uh, looking to... for batteries and power inverters and, and accommodations? What were they thought... looking for? Food? Water? So I realize that Global News right now maybe does not have the greatest reputation in Yellowknife. life. Uh, for anyone who did not notice this, I think there was a staff member from Global who was posting in various Facebook groups a few days ago trying to find some sort of piece of equipment or other, which is not a great look for a journalist in a city that's currently under an evacuation order. So uh, I, I think we would all have preferred that they didn't do that. Frankly, if you want journalism from a city that's evacuating, I would just rely on the local journalists and I would not send national journalists into that community. That is purely a personal operating preference. Uh, however, the crew that separately came to Fort Simpson yesterday, I will say, seemed very nice and seemed to understand that. And and they came to have a chat about how we've been coping through like the Facebook ban and, and all that sort of stuff as well. So this does seem to be, you know, a, a national discussion point now about how that meta ban is affecting things. Obviously, I think it's stupid and dangerous, but I also don't fully blame meta. I do significantly blame meta, but I also am not best thrilled with large news organizations role in all of that and the government's role in all of that. There's a whole lot going on. But the one thing I will say is the meta ban, the point of the ban, if you ask meta, is that they are going to start getting charged under the federal legislation for whenever news is shared on Facebook. So to avoid that, because they disagree with it, they're just shutting down any news at all. But the legislation does not come into effect until the start of next year. So Meta could lift the ban now, no matter what you think of Meta's principles, whether you agree with them or not. Meta could lift the ban now, and they would face no financial penalty because the legislation does not yet take effect. The fact that Meta keeps the ban in place despite what is clearly a risk to life is, I think, uh, reprehensible and irresponsible. And I hope that they reconsider that very, very quickly, not just for the Northwest Territories, but for BC and many other areas that could really use it right now. I realize that our audience did an amazing job of finding our coverage anyway and sharing it, screen grabbing it, 
Uh, you guys, our audience, I have done nothing but say thank you to all of you for the past week because you figured it out and you got it going. But I do think that Meta, there's very little defense for that band remaining in place when they would suffer no loss whatsoever, lifting it temporarily. Steps off. So, Is it just like a statement that they're making then? Yeah. They're basically saying, well, we 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 disagree with the federal legislation, so we're going to ban news. And that's fine. But the federal legislation hasn't kicked in yet. So you could lift that ban and help people stay alive and it wouldn't affect you. Hmm. Great. Huh. So let's all just let that simmer for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> really let it out. <laughs> It's almost as if one of the largest companies in the world doesn't care. It's strange. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, yes, uplifting. There was talk of uh, talking about relaxing things. Yes, <laughs> Megan, Megan had one. You went to a soccer game. I went to a soccer game yesterday. It was pretty fun. Well, tell us more. Um, well, okay, so as we were joking about the other day, I'm known through... Uh, my sister but my sister is actually known through her fiance who is a professional soccer player and he's on the Calgary team uh, on like in the Premier League and so we went to his game yesterday and it was pretty fun I haven't uh, I haven't been to one of their games in a really long time because obviously I don't live here and it was exciting to be in a crowd of people that were just happy and weren't evacuating or fleeing from their burning city and they were you know having a great time so <laughs> yeah it's pretty did fun it rub off, though? yeah what did it rub off did you feel good then after I did feel good after I think both Shri and I felt felt really great and also it was Shri's first time ever being to a um a, a game like that and like my mom said afterwards that it was like seeing that through a child's eyes because everything was just so exciting to her <laughs> like absolutely everything was like yeah it was it was really funny so it was a good time center passes to half half back to center center back to half <laughs> yeah it was pretty wild <laughs> can we get a can we get a yay sports misc out of that i feel like i can hear people sarcastically saying it yay sports Hey, sports. <laughs> sports. I, I just saw, I need more information on this. Sereklo on in our comments. Um, cool fact, I met Nikolai Costa Waldo, Game of Thrones, and his incredible wife in Norway and told them and many other filmmakers about the wildfires in the NWT. You're in Norway right now? Yeah, she was just out there. Cool. Wow. What an evacuation story. I know. <laughs> Why did I think of Norway? <laughs> I just walked to a different plane line and just ended up in Norway. <laughs> Guys, we could be in she, Switzerland right now. now. <laughs> Jesse, what was that? I think she's on her way back now. She posted yesterday that her mm. her back visit now? there was ending. Not no, like coming back to <laughs> wherever she's going. Coming back to family now. Not obviously was... back to Yelmish, but uh, yeah. Very cool. Oh, and I'm I'm just in the middle of restarting Game of Thrones. Lecter, we're in season two. We restarted it. So yeah. yeah. So that's that rings that rings very close to my heart because we've been watching. And he's currently uh, Jamie Lannister is currently under uh, uh, under Stark. Uh, uh, he's uh, a prisoner of the Starks right now. So. Uh, quick. I <laughs> Great. Wait. That, why did that sound like Star Trek? I'm sorry. Oh, what are you know right now? On the pop culture train at some point, just to no, dip a toe. Dip I a toe onto the train, would you? I refuse. I just want to quickly address a, a comment in here from, from Tim, who says, uh, I get your comments about Facebook being the only landing point for so many and, and take your point and agree with it. The meta couldn't should lift the ban, at least temporarily. Having said that, is there an irony that Facebook is the point your website points to for the mornings at the cabin live streams? No, Tim, I don't think that's ironic. That's where our audience is. Necessity. We know that most people in the NWT use Facebook a lot and they consider it a central point. My my job is not to help Meta put a roadblock in place. My job is to undermine the roadblock and still get to the audience and get them the information they need despite Meta. So 
asking everybody just to come over to our website probably doesn't work. Like we have had to do that over the past week because those are the circumstances. But in situations like this, where I can put something back onto a meta platform that they're not going to ban, that helps us to continue communicating with people. And it's it, it's not my job to respect their wishes, frankly. It's my job to find ways around it. And that's what we're trying to do here because we know where our audience is. And even if Meta is making it harder for our audience, we shouldn't. So I will I will keep finding ways to to do things like this and to do our coverage on Cabin Radio's website because it's, you know, <laughs> they can make bad decisions, but we shouldn't. And like it is a useful that's platform. It. Like, aside from all of that, it's got this live stream option. It's got like, you know, you can do these things on here. So yeah. anyway. Well, it's become it's become the platform. That's kind of the point is that we mm -hmm. can't, there's nowhere else to really do this. Like we can't do this on Instagram. We can't do this on TikTok. Well, we could, but we'd all have to be dancing. Um, also, <laughs> it's important to note uh, that we're, uh, it's important to note for Tim uh, that we ha literally have to stream this on Ollie's personal profile not ca not cabin radio's profile or even mornings at the cabin's profile because facebook will likely knock it off or take it off and they may even do that for on uh, on ollie's personal page i guess we'll have to wait and see so i mean the fact that it's become the the place for all these things to happen this is kind of why we have to do it here and uh, it's kind of unfortunate if there was any other platform we could do it on like periscope then maybe we could do that, but we can't really right now. So, yeah, I, let's all go back to MySpace. Yeah, right. Let's just go back to MySpace. Let's do it on there. As if you were ever on MySpace, Megan. Okay, I was like not even bored when MySpace was the thing. Oh, all right, Megan, stop saying things like that. <laughs> Look, Wait, I... is that actually true, or are you exaggerating? When was MySpace a thing? No, no, no. Is it true that you weren't born? Sold. Well, I don't know. When was it a thing? It, it was in 2005. Okay, I was five. So yeah, I was born. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the, the voice there for the Northwest Territories. If the youth have a message, pass that on to Megan. Megan at cabinradio.ca. M-E-G-A-N. Uh, Megan, they're representing anyone under the age of 35? In the chat. <laughs> But that's why we have her here. But she drinks more tea and reads more books than like a 75 year old grandmother. So oh, she doesn't really give us that youth perspective. Okay. <laughs> but who was it that suggested that we go to a rage room, Jesse? You, it was you, but it because was you me. are filled with a lot of rage, it's you have the rage of a much, much younger person, Plenty. but like the Fair. pop culture knowledge of someone who's lived in a cave. I would, I would argue she has the rage of a 77 year old grandfather mm, that's fair <laughs> <laughs> yes ollie it's a rage room it's a Ooh, it's for you to go into a room and they give you like a baseball bat and stuff and then there's all this old like there's like glasses and old computers and old tvs and stuff and then you just take the baseball bats and you just you just get out all your rage on all these things <laughs> Anyways, they're full, so we are instead going axe throwing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think but rage he... and axe throwing goes together very well, I but it, it doesn't. But do you know what Wheeler said? That he will risk a misc to go axe throwing. Oh, <laughs> I know. Oh, yes. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So. Um, it's important to note that the uh, rage room does have spots on Thursday, but we wanted to go Tuesday because. Lecter, you and uh, you, Nicole and Patty may move on to Winnipeg. Is that still part of the plan? Maybe. Uh, it's 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 being thrown around as a possibility. It's obviously a long drive to uh, to continue east to Winnipeg, but uh, depending on how things go in the next few days, you know whether or not we, if we get a clearer picture, uh, you know as to how long we might be uh, not in Yellowknife. Uh, yeah, that that might be the route we go. But uh, yeah, at this point, we'll see. I mean, that it is a long drive, but in that beautiful 2022 F-150 purchased at Aurora Ford, it's a nice, comfortable one. <laughs> well, now that we've got a plug in for uh, for a Yellowknife business, can I uh, take this opportunity to do uh, another live commercial? Yes. Are we ready? Okay. Yeah, please go. Mornings at the Wabin. 
is brought to you this morning by the Explorer Hotel, who continues to operate as an essential service provider, supporting the firefighting efforts in the NWT. They're looking for local food and beverage staff to assist with these efforts. If you're in Yellowknife and would like to help out, please contact gm at explorerhotel.ca with your information. That's again, the Explorer Hotel, looking for additional kitchen staff to help support the firefighting efforts in the NWT. Get in touch, gm at explorerhotel.ca. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Very good. Very that good. Amazing. Yeah, wow. Uh, this morning's show also brought to you by the Lady Slipper Lodge and a Calgary Rage Room. And if you would like to sponsor uh, future episodes of Mornings at the Wabin for as long as this run lasts, get in touch. Sales at cabinradio.ca. It might already be too late. On... <laughs> Can we not have that as the slogan? Can we please not have that as the slogan? It might already be too late. It might be the slogan for this show. Okay, no. I meant say. for advertising. Uh, it may not uh, happen again. Can I just say thank you so much to everyone who has uh, signed up for our Patreon over the last week. Mm. Y you guys are now paying for one of our reporters, which is so incredible. And and when I, you know, we always are like, please help us out a little bit if you can, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I realize there are also bigger, more important things to donate to United Way NWT. If you're wondering how to help and you're watching this, please go and donate to them. That's where, you know, that that money is going to do incredible things. But the people who have taken time to donate to us, yeah, you're now paying for one of our reporting staff, which is a, such a massive help and hopefully feels to you like that's doing what you wanted it to do because that money goes directly to funding people who are doing the reporting that hopefully you're being able to rely on. So I just wanted to quickly say thank you to everybody for that. Patreon.com slash cabin radio. Big thanks. Um, can I also just give a quick uh, PSA? I don't know how much how much time we uh, we have left. I don't know if we're going with the uh, the classic mornings at the Wabin format with uh, forty minutes creep up. We cr quickly scramble to wrap up the show, or not. But um, I, I just I just like to say, of course, yeah. you know, we we know that uh, that the Northwest Territories, uh, everybody and their dog has a dog, and everybody and their dog and cat have of course made their way to various parts of uh, perhaps elsewhere in the NWT and Alberta. We've seen uh, a lot of people here in Red Deer and you could pretty much uh, you could pretty much pick out any uh, displaced northerner by the fact that they have one, two or maybe even three dogs with them in a hotel that's not necessarily normally an ideal setting to have a large dog. And uh, myself and Nicole are very much the same with Finnegan and Jaya here. Just want to uh, mention that make sure that you are doing us proud in the north and not leaving little grumpy messes for our southern neighbors. Make sure that you are picking up your dog's poop when you are around these hotel premises. That would be a really nice thing to do. I've been a lot of days. Pick up your dog evacuations. <laughs> oh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we we and I haven't fully figured out where to put the dog poop here. So it's all the little bags have just been going in the back of the truck. And it's <laughs> going to have to figure out where they go to. But the back of the truck right now is essentially like a makeshift uh, sewage facility for the dog. Oh. So like, yeah. I don't know what the deal is in and when it comes to if anyone living in Fort Simpson knows like where what the responsible thing to do with dog waste is, let me know. I'm sure Lynn can help you out with that. Trying not to bother the hosts who are being so gracious to me with you know the uh, the uh, the evacuations from my dog. So I'm uh, <laughs> I'm pick her out. Separate. I mean, there's there's garbages around town, aren't there? Yeah, but sometimes municipalities prefer not to have the dog. Anyway, like nobody nobody's watching this at breakfast <laughs> for this comment. Sorry, everybody. Listen, can we spend another ten minutes on dog poop? Um... <laughs> 
Well, if we want to transition to dog P, uh, I had a uh, oh no, <laughs> I had a little little pay it forward moment our first night in the hotel when uh, someone's dog had uh, clearly had an accident in the hallway, and I was on my way back up and washroom was right there. Thought you know what? Yeah, go grab some paper towels, mopped it up. This never happened. Northerners are great guests. Don't don't look down <laughs> on us at all. Thank you, Alberta. <laughs> We are you people. our evacuation ambassador, Scott? I'm I'm doing my best. <laughs> I'm doing my best. Good job. Oh man, uh, moving on from dog waste. Um, <laughs> obviously, there's like and and just like little little things. Obviously, uh, uh, been great reports from the, the evacuee centers that uh, people have been uh, treated really well. Lecter, you said that that it was really easy and you got treated really well. Um, we we obviously didn't go to an evacuation center. We've been kind of uh, plopped down here with family, which has been obviously an incredible, a huge privilege for us. Uh, it's not lost on us, uh, and we're very grateful. Uh, but like going into town, we go into town for groceries and things like that. And I was in town yesterday doing some running around and uh, I, I stopped uh, at a liquor store and I stopped at the grocery store and both times people like parked behind me and saw the NWT license plate and they're like oh are you are you part of that and I was like well from Yellowknife but uh, just you know I, I just kind of said we're from Yellowknife and it's you know it's been tough and it's been kind of nice to just have random people just be like hey all the best uh, hope you guys can get home very soon so that's been kind of cool as well um, that it's obviously uh, it's national news uh, but Alberta's kind of taken in you know thousands and thousands of people from the NWT and have uh, been treating people pretty well so thanks Alberta yeah Indeed. I a lot I have uh, I have no independent confirmation, by the way, that anyone is trying to steal your license plates in Alberta. I know. Right, so I saw that. Yeah, I mean that kind of happens everywhere. I uh, had my my uh, uh, polar bear license plate on my car the entire time I lived in Vancouver, which was seven years, which is <laughs> illegal. Um, but uh, <laughs> if I ever got pulled over, I'd just say I'm a student. Um, but every time I parked at a place like Stanley Park or something like that, I'd come back from my walk or whatever, and there'd be people like crowded around it taking pictures of it. So, I mean, the interest in those polar bear license plates kind of doesn't end at the Alberta border. It kind of goes everywhere. So, I don't know. If there's people stealing them, that's awful. So, make sure they're secure anyway, just in case there's is someone trying to take it. Good stuff. On, on that note, had another um, northerners looking out for each other. In uh, well, in Alberta moment when uh, so we got we got stopped by someone uh, the other day. Someone stopped Nicole and said, "Hey, you're you're from the NWT, right?" And she said, "Yeah." And she said, "You might want to just consider like taking your license plate off like at night. You know, if we're in like a if you're in a dimly lit lot, you know, you never know. You don't want to take the chance. Like it's pretty easy to get them off, and and uh, you don't you obviously don't want to get it stolen. So." We hadn't really given it a second thought until that moment. And then that night, we were like, you know what? Yeah, like, let's just, whatever. Let's just uh, not take any chances. We're in a darker part of this parking lot, so couldn't hurt to just pop them off. So as I was taking the license plate off of my truck, uh, a fellow northerner was walking by, walking their dog, and they looked at me and they said, hey, is that your license plate? And I turned around <laughs> and said... Oh, yeah. uh, I just, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's mine. Uh, <laughs> and then I recognized him and said, oh, hey, how's it going? And uh, <laughs> told, told this them. This is where this is coming from, that there are Northerners fearing that people will take it. So they're taking their own off and people are seeing it and being like, oh, my gosh, all these license plates are being stolen. <laughs> And, you know, it, pro it probably didn't help that I had that in mind as I was doing it. So I probably had a naturally like sketchy kind of body language going on. It's like, I got to do this quick. I got to get this license plate off. Uh, but uh, yeah, luckily they did recognize me. And when I turned around, they saw my cabin radio shirt and they said, oh, and I saw the cabin radio sweater. I figured, yeah, it's, it's, it's probably OK. So we got a good yeah, reputation, guys. Yeah. Wow. Now we're just giving license plate thieves uh, an in. Wear a cabin oh, no. radio sweater. Yeah. Just be like, yeah, it's mine. Hey, it's a merch sale, guys. Let them buy the sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> License plate thieves get 5% off. No. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, we are we are coming up on our 40 minutes, everybody. All so right. 
I think we we will bring this one to a close. People are asking, how often are you doing this? Uh, all the all the sort of the how much longer do I have to listen to this? That, 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 nobody has to, nobody has to, but they should and must. So uh, this will be eight o'clock every weekday morning for 40 minutes or so. If we have to go longer, we will. But uh, generally speaking, we'll shoot for 40 minutes. Um, we will, Lecter, can we podcast the audio from this if I send it to you? Yeah, why not? Let's give it a shot. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll throw it on the Mornings at the Cabin podcast. So if you're already subscribing to that, you'll, you'll get it that way. You can always come back and watch this later on as well if you miss it. It stays on my profile. Why is it on my profile? Because Meta won't let us use Cabin Radio, blah, 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 blah. So we will keep doing this uh, every, every day at 8 a.m. The cast of characters will change a little bit from day to day, but you will always be able to come and hang out with us and, and come chat if you have questions, comments, anything like that. Uh, just drop them in. Uh, Lecter, thank you. Shannon, thank you. Megan, thank you. Wheeler, thank you. It's lovely. We love you all very much, and we will see you this time tomorrow. Bye bye. Can I just say something quickly? <laughs> <laughs> what, it's Megan? Important. I just want to say that Scott just commented saying, "If we get a few more Patreon subscribers, they can buy Zoom," which is exactly why yesterday we should said that we should go over forty minutes, Ollie. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. I had such a lovely outro there. It was so. You're welcome. Um, it wasn't even an um or a pause. It was just <laughs> straight to the camera. There was a sound effect on it and everything. And then, yeah, crashed the outro. I'm just saying. One more time. <laughs> One more time. Do it again. Bye, everyone. Wait. No. <laughs>